All right, we are recording and we are in business. Welcome everyone to Diesel Cores November 2019 team call. So today's kind of, I sat down to do my team call and I actually brought my computer over to the kitchen because for the first time in a long time, I have fed the kids, bathed the kids, put dinner on the table, cleaned up the kitchen, showered myself, and I'm ready for a team call. So that hasn't happened in a really long time. I don't know, I'm on the, I'm on the ball today. I'm being really productive. And I'm actually on the kitchen counter and it brings me right back to when I started building my business. Like this is where I was at. I didn't have the cheap Ikea desk. I didn't have the really cool picture behind me that Beachbody gifted me. Like it was me, a laptop, and by the way, not this awesome MacBook that I have right now. It was like an ancient block of a laptop. But I remember being at my kitchen counter just wanting this business so bad. And I would listen, you know, put on my earphones or, or have the computer on while I was walking around just doing stuff, um, you know, and I, I get it, I get it. You guys are all here probably tonight in the same circumstance. You're, you're doing life, you're juggling a bunch of things, but you're here because you want this. And so I just wanted to say, I'm, I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of you and I'm super excited about the energy on our team, the direction we are going. I know a lot of the leaders that just came back from the retreat, along with my, my sister and my mom and I are fired up about the future because we, we really have some epic things in the pipeline. And what we do now, guys, what we do now as a team, it's what is going to count the most in the time, the peak season of the year, which is January, February, we know this, in the fitness industry. So all that to say is let's rock and roll. We've got a fully loaded night, but I do want to just start off the call and say I'm really proud of us. I'm proud of us for showing up even when it's hard, even when we're juggling a gazillion things, it's on this kitchen counter. I built this business and I'm excited to watch you do the same. All right, so let's kick this off. Veronica, I'm gonna go ahead and screen share because, oh, I forgot to even put it up in the first place. Okay, here we go. So, these are core November 2019 call. My sister's gonna kick it off with some recognition. Hit it. All right, guys, and Happy Monday. Let's rock and roll with our top coaches of Diesel Core. So these are all the coaches. If you're new on the call, we do this every month and we just kind of recognize and celebrate um, because although this may look like a bunch of numbers on the board, they're actually people that we together as a team have helped and we've brought them on board onto our team. So congratulations to everybody. Because remember, again, at the end of the day, this, this is our job. Our job is to help others. Like how epic and awesome is that? So with that being said, I'm going to kick it off with top coach, um, this girl named Veronica. I mean, she's just like killing it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm coming after her because the second month in a row she beats me. Just saying. <laughs> so, oh, that's okay. Never mind. Um, then we also have um, Monica Lopez, 18, Allison Baleka. I just want to do a shout out real quick to Allison. She is a brand new coach. She hit the ground running um, and ended the month at 12. We have Michelle Pier uh, Pirella, 11. Megan Pallone, 10. Susan Lepre, 10. Jennifer, hi, I'm sorry. I always butcher that last name. Gachio Chichea, uh, 10. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Donna Paniagua, 10. And then we have our Success Club 5 qualifiers. We have Katie Betsy at 8. Dixie Andrande at 8. Alessandra Silva, Silva Street, eight, Becky Cooper, six, Ann Quinones, six, Alexis Molina, six, Cecilia Riego, six, Tabitha Bogue, six, Angelica Flores, six, Yvette Avila, six, Gina Cohen, six, April Bailey, six, and Carletti Medina, six. So congratulations, ladies, um, for, for, again, impact. These are lives that you are impacting. So totally awesome. Go to the next slide. We've got our Emerald Coaches. Woo woo, let's make it rain for these girls. So these are girls that decided to start their business and hit the ground running with making the first step is Emerald. So if you don't know, for those of you guys that are new um, to the team, this is getting two people signed up as coaches in your organization, which unlocks the beautiful world of team volume. And if you don't know about that, you need to know about that. So we've got Sarah Martin, congratulations. We've got, um, I'm not sure, for Heart of Heroes, I don't have her name. Alexa Molina is on the top. Alexa Molina, and then we have Maria, Allison, and Christian over here at the bottom right. So congratulations, ladies, on advancing your business to 
emeralds. Next one. We've got road to e road to e road to New Orleans. This is for summit. So this is the success starter qualification. Um, this is for brand new coaches that they become coaches and they start the business right away. And if you hit success club, the first three months from becoming a coach, you become what's called a success starter. So it's a very prestigious title to earn. And there's only one shot at earning it. And a part of that is on the third month, if you qualify, you will also get your free ticket to summit. So this is pretty awesome. We've got Allison that is success uh, month one um, qualified and also, uh, what was, forgot the name again. Yeah, I know you wrote it. Allison Molina. Allison, there you go. They're both Allisons? Alexis Molina. Alexis. <laughs> Monica's like, this I'm is so a really great reminder, guys. By the way, all the recognition gets put Please in. Please put the name. That's where we grab it from. So you got to make sure you put the names on it because it's very hard for us to connect the dots. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have a growing big team. <laughs> so, Alexis Molina, congratulations, ladies. You guys crushed month one. Two more months to go, and Summit Ticket is yours, and we will be chilling together at New Orleans. So go ahead, Monica. Oh, where's yours? Oh, I, get, I see it. Never mind. All right, we've got Team Builder. So this is the road to elite, guys. Congratulations. This is the new program. This, this program started this year, and there's four milestones to hit, and it's called the Road to Elite. So you've got your Team Builder, Team Leader, Premier, and um, Elite. So congratulations, Tabitha Bogue. That is huge to be a, uh, qualified as a Team Builder. And then we have Dixie as a team leader. I'll never forget. We were all sitting in the cabin and all of a sudden Dixie was just like, oh, I'm team leader. Like it was such an epic moment for all of us to like celebrate together um, in the cabin at, at, um, at um, Gatlinburg. And um, congratulations, cause this is a huge, huge big deal um, to break advance the team leader. And then we've got our first premier coach of diesel core and she's not stopping there she is like i always say a fart away from elite she's right there and going to make elite i'm coming behind you so i'm i'm almost premier I'm, I'm right there um but congratulations monica on on leading by example and and showing us what is possible and just paving the way for us i mean guys like just look at this don't look at this and be like, oh my God, that is so far-fetched or oh my God, that is so hard. No, she's showing us what is possible. Look at this as, God, I, I, um, I can be there and I'm going to be there and this is what's possible because my coach is showing me the way. And so guys, take that as inspiration. So thank you, Monica, and congratulations. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, Core Unit, we are not even close to stopping there. We're going all the way and I'm super excited about that. So with that, I will also share some memories from our 2019 Leaders Retreat. So I just got to say, this trip, this trip, I even wrote a post about it. You didn't quite know what to expect because this time we invited the guys, a lot of the, the spouses came along and I, you know, my sister and I would bounce this idea off each other. Well, should we do it? Should we not? Should we do it? Should we not? It'd be really interesting, but let's, you know, but here's what we did know. We did know that our husbands being there all along the way on our Beachbody, um, you know, building of our business, the journey along the way, understanding what we were doing, why we were doing it, understanding every time we hopped on a call just like this, what it was about and what we were aiming for, getting to know the, you know, first of all, the coaches on our team and why we love them so much. And then also their spouses, like it was super impactful. And so this year we decided to make a, a couple's edition of our leaders retreat and it could not have gone any better. Um, you guys know that we had an epic VIP guest, uh, Jericho McMatthews and her husband, Yosef, who also joined us and their uh, beautiful son, Bexton. But it, yeah, and, and that, was, that was amazing, don't get me wrong, it was amazing to have them there. And while that may have seemed like the highlight, really guys, the, high, the, the, the biggest takeaways were in the small moments. The small moments when we get to know Jericho as a mom, as a wife, the small moments when we got to see our husbands, um, you know, really getting, a, like building this, this 
bond and this, you know, bromance as I like to call it. And between us girls, like getting to know each other at a deeper level, sharing, you know, tons of laughs, but equal amount of tears, equal amount of, you know, vulnerability happening, um, aha moments, just so much, so much that we took in, in just three days of being in Tennessee that I say to myself, you know, these retreats are more than just a trip. These retreats are more than just a lot of fun, although we have a shit ton of fun. It's more than the cute gifts that, the, you know, everybody gets and, and the getting together and the, and the few cocktails or a hundred that we have, but it's about strengthening our bond as a team, making our vision for the future crystal clear and just coming together in a really big way. And, you know, this is a third annual retreat that we have hosted. And one of the girls messaged me after, she's like, you know, I just, I think it was Gina. I just don't know how you guys do it, but you top it every time. And I just know, I just know that's because us as a team, we are consistently leveling up. What makes this team, what makes this trip, what makes the, the retreat, what it is, is this team. And so if, you know, I remember Amy Figueroa watching last year's retreat and she said, I want to be there next year. And she made it happen. And you know, if you go to her page and you read all the story, you know, all the posts that she wrote about this weekend's retreat or last weekend's retreat, I mean, exactly what she wanted to get out of it. She got and more, but she set the goal this time last year on a call just like this. It was watching it and saying, I want that. I'm going to be there because I belong there. And she made it happen along with a lot of the other girls on it that also attended. So if you were watching from home and you felt a little FOMO, <laughs> cause that's normal. That's a good thing, right? Good FOMO. Um, just know that it takes, it, you can get there by next year. Hands down, anyone can. We've got coaches who join mid-year and accomplish the goal of um, qualifying, like Michi, uh, achieve the goal of, a, of attending the retreat that very same year. It's a matter of setting the goal and crushing every, every milestone towards it, okay? Um, we kind of wait until about mid next year when we will announce where the next location is, what the next requirements are, the qualifications. But just know, it's no big secret what builds this business. It's two things. It's two things, right? We know Success Club is, a, is the measure of how we change lives through fitness and health and our products, our amazing products and our amazing supplements. That's what, that's what Success Club measures. So we're telling you Success Club 5 at the bare minimum is a, at least helping three people on their health and fitness journey each month. That's your benchmark right there. Solid goal to reach for. And if you really, really intend on going big in this business, I urge you to up your goal to success club 10 or more. Mine every month is success club 20 or more because that's the benchmark and the baseline that I've given myself. But each of us are a different level in our business. And it's up to you to set that baseline. But at the minimum, success club five, we're saying you are going to help people get healthy and fit through our programs, through Shakeology and through our nutrition systems. And the other part of our business is team building, right? because you should not be doing this alone. You need a tribe, you need your people to start, you know, an army, an army of people that are pushing forward on the mission to get people healthy and fit. And so that's where team building comes into play. You tackle these two arenas in this business and you will undoubtedly arrive at the, at the goal of achieving um, your spot at the next retreat. So if that's you, if you sat back and watched us, just know, number one, we missed you there. We want you there. You can sweat with us. You can, you can trip it out with us. But two, it starts now. It doesn't start a month before the trip is happening. It starts now. The work starts now. The vision starts now. And no better time because we've got so many amazing things in the pipeline to help. All right? So with that being said, let's talk about, as a team, what we are doing in unison to help all of us leverage um, everything that's happening in our business to grow our business. Number one, we've got a coaching sneak peek that is happening on Wednesday night, okay? Now, usually we do these, these coach sneak peeks in a private page. You, you invite people, you reach out to people that may have been interested. You maybe reach out to people that are on your mind that you think would be a really great coach. You maybe reach out to your challengers already in, the, in your challenge groups and you invite them into our coaching sneak peek group. And in that group, the night that we schedule it, we'll go in there, pop in there live, and we'll share about the coaching opportunity. We usually share who coaches are, what we do, how we do it, how we earn, and how people can sign up, right? It's that coach life that we talk about. Um, but the last coach opportunity call I did, 
I did it a little bit different and I kind of winged it because I got back from Beachbody's leadership retreat, the one that's hosted for the top 2% of the company. My sister, my mom and I were present. Um, we got to um, rep our, our team at this year's leaders retreat. But when I got back, I was like, you know, why am I doing this quietly, right? Like, why are we doing this in a little group? Why aren't we going public? Why don't I just talk about the coaching life and do it live on my Facebook, do it live on my Instagram, have everybody do the same thing. Every coach that had prospects, all you have to do is do, do a watch party as it's going live and it'll pop up on your page just like if you were part of the group as well. And whoever wants to jump in, jump in. And whoever wants to get out, gets out. But we are exposing the world to what we are doing, right? We are casting a wider net. And I said, why not? Well, I want to do the same thing this time. Wednesday night, it's going to go live on live pages, on live Instagram. All you have to do is click a button that says um, watch party. It'll pop up on your wall. And if you've got prospects, if you've got anybody in your mind that would be interested in the coaching um, business at whatever level, whether it's discount because they're on Shakeology, they're crushing their workouts and they want to save some money down to someone who's looking for some part-time cash, maybe for the holidays to someone who is looking for a real deal I want to build something, you know, I've got big, big dreams, big vision and wants to go all in wherever they fall in that spectrum. They have a place on our team guys. They really do. We want them. We want, we want everybody who I call a lifer who just wants to feel good in life, right? Live that coach life. And the coach life to me is pushing play and workouts, drinking Shakeology, drinking that dense nutrition every single day and, and just clean eating and living this healthy, fulfilling life. That's the coach life right? Doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a business builder. That's always a plus, but that's what I envision diesel core being at its core is beach body lifers. And so if you've got those people make a running list as of now, reach out to them, say, this is happening Wednesday night, plug them in. We usually have guest appearances of coaches telling their stories. And then again, we share those basics of who we are, what we do, how we do it, how we earn. A lot of you guys probably watched one of those videos coming into the team and there we get out there and we cast a net for the next coaches on our team. This is our way as leaders to help you because we get it. I remember when I started coaching, I knew I loved this. I had all the feels, right? I woke up every day excited. I had like all the, the butterflies every single day, but I had a hard time putting it into words. I had a hard time explaining what the coaching opportunity was. I had a hard time talking about the who's the what's in the house until I got used to the, the verbiage. I got used to the language. You know what else I did? Every time one of these popped up and it was my upline doing them, I always plugged in some and I always listened and I always practiced and I, until I started hosting my own. That is what we wanna do for you guys. We wanna help you get out there and share this, right? And until you be comfortable, until you learn the verbiage, we will handle that part. We just ask you to get people there, you know, whoever it is, whether it's in your challenge groups or prospects that you, you think would be great for this and get them plugged in because they can be the face of the next coach on your team, the next coach on your team. That's a big deal. Okay. So that's one arena. The second arena, we got to start making noise now because we are going to host a black, well, actually the Friday before black Friday flash sale happening on Friday. Now this runs a little bit different than the coaching um, opportunity. This will be held in a group and it will be a private closed group. Okay. You make sure that you get someone's approval before you add them into this group. We are not the kind of company that just goes and like adds our entire friends list and annoy a bunch of people. That's not what it's about. Have solid conversations, have, you know, solid invites, solid, you know, relationships that you are building with people and inspire them. And if they are inspired in any kind of level and they're thinking about getting started, they can save money through this flash sale. If you're brand new to a flash sale on our team, um, I am going to go live tomorrow and share exactly the X and O's on how it works. But basically, basically all challenge packs currently are on sale, $20 off, right? So we already have an epic sale happening. But what we do is we tack on an extra $10 off in what we call an instant rebate. So if someone purchases this on Friday, um, they will get automatically any challenge pack or completion pack. They will get an extra $10 off, off the already $20 off offer. Now here's the kicker. The $10 off comes from you, their coach. So for example, Stacy, I'm looking at Stacy right now. If Stacy has a prospect cu customer come into the flash sale, and let's say her name, Pulana. Pulana decides to buy a challenge pack, six weeks to work challenge pack. It is currently on sale for 150, normally 170. 
She will purchase that at 150, okay? And then Stacy will then, after the order processes, will um, cash app her or any other way, Amazon gift card, whatever, 10 bucks back to the customer, okay? Out of her own money. Because guess what? Stacy's making a certain commission off that sale and she's giving back $10 as an incentive to this customer. Still earning another 30, but giving back 10. Now, here's where as a team, just to hype it up, to help you guys get people into this flash sale, we are doing a pair of Nikes as a giveaway. This is so cool. So what we'll do is every person that comes in and purchases that Friday will get a raffle ticket towards a pair of Nike sneakers, okay? That, the Nike sneaker raffle will come from me, okay? I will, that's the way to entice people to come into this flash um, sale where they'll save a little bit of money and possibly win a pair of Nikes. Now, they can also get an extra raffle ticket if they tack on Energize, Collagen, Beach Bars, any add-on to their order. So if Fulana, Stacy's customer, decides to order her challenge pack and tack on Energize, her customer gets an extra raffle ticket and guess what? Stacy just upped her, her, her commission and just made back her 10 bucks. See how that works out? So it's up to you coaches to really work this. Use this Nike giveaway as your tool to get people in there, add on, because you know we all need our Energize. We need our unicorn juice. Like we wouldn't function without it. No, no problems over here, right? Like we don't, not addicted, not at all. Um, just kidding. But we know we use these products ourselves. I use Recover every single day. I use Energize every day. I put co collagen, like literally I put collagen in my soup today. Like we are using these products and when people are inspired by us, we gotta make sure we're sharing everything we're using on our journey. The flash sale will help you now then close the, close the sale and get this person excited about their journey, right? Walking into the holidays. So this is happening Friday. I already released the teaser on my Instagram stories. You can check it out and do the same. Tomorrow, I will also share with you guys, I'll share with the entire team, um, a series of our Instagram story call to actions that you guys can use yourselves. Um, and we will also, I'll also go live with exactly how it's going to work out and the link to the page. Does that sound exciting to you guys? Does that exciting? Give me, give me thumbs up if that sounds exciting. I'm super excited about this because there is no reason Every single 57 of us on this call right now that want to work our business, that are that want to crush goals in November, doesn't close Success Club by the end of Friday. Really, guys, three people. Three people is what crushes your Success Club goal. Three or more. There's no reason we, we can't crush these goals. All right? I'm going to challenge everybody here. Get 30 people in that flash sale. Oh, and I forgot to say something. I am going to put in the flash sale that 20 orders need to process in order for the Nike giveaway to happen. So I don't want people just sitting on this. Like, we are serious. This is no excuse November. No excuse November. We are a team of uh, 1,500 coaches on our team. There's no reason why we can't crush this 20-order goal, right? So that's happening Friday. Coach opportunity call happening on Wednesday. We are rocking and rolling, guys. Okay. Now, something we want to share with you guys tonight. Because this was something we shared at our leaders' retreat in Tennessee with all the leaders. Um, it was a, an, an actually a presentation held at Beachbody's leadership for 2% of the entire company, the top 2%. And it was super impactful by um, Kim Carver, who is one of the corporate rep reps for Beachbody, who is personally my greatest mentor in this business, um, aside from my coach, Christina Delgado. I mean, this guy, we, we call him the coach whisperer because he just is excellent at what he does. He has this tremendous love and passion for this company and, and especially for us coaches. And he delivered a very powerful message at our retreat. Uh, we decided to share this with the Diesel Core leaders in, in Tennessee. And the conversation that, that ensued after watching this was just spectacular. Just so many aha moments. And we decided as a, a team that we were going to share this with everyone. So Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play this video. What you're looking on your screen, this disgusting little thing is called a thrip. Raise your hand if you know what a thrip is. Yeah, I didn't either. I had no idea what a thrip was. But after this call, I knew exactly what a thrip was. I knew exactly what to do with them. And I knew exactly what the next steps were. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share this video with you guys. Can you guys see all this? Right, Give me a thumbs right, up. All right, all right. So... No? Okay, hold on. I second. am excited to start off the morning with you. Hold on a second. I know exactly why we can't see it. Give me a second. I have to share. 
Okay. All right. Can you guys now see the YouTube? Okay, perfect. All right. Let's rock and roll. Thank you guys today. I want to talk to you guys about thrips. Thrips. I bet none of you would have guessed I would have said that word to get my presentation started, but let me explain. I'm one of those weird people who really enjoys yard work. And this year, one of the things we did in our yard Sorry. is we planted some knockout rose bushes. These were first time we've ever planted rose bushes. And so for me, it was a real highlight to have these knockout rose bushes. They're a little bit smaller and they get a lot of blooms and they bloom really frequently. And for the first couple months, this rose bush, these rose bushes that we had were the, for me at least, the highlight of our, of our yard. But after a couple months, I started to notice some things were changing. Some of the buds didn't look quite right. They wouldn't bloom. They were kind of dying. And I wasn't sure what was going on with them. And I didn't worry about it initially when it was just a couple of them, but soon more and more of these buds weren't making it. So I clipped off a stem and I took it to the nursery to go find an expert and ask for some help. And I went in there and I found him and I handed him the stem and he kind of looked at it, nodding his head knowingly as he cracked open the dead bud and he said, well, you've got thrips. And I was like, well, of course I do. What the heck are thrips? And he went on to explain to me that thrips are these really small winged insects. I mean, guys, they're so small. They would look like, a, like an oval shaped piece of sand if you saw them. But what these little buggers do is they burrow into the bud of the rose and they scrape off the top layer and they feed on the sap, the lifeblood of that bud. And truthfully, you guys, because they're so small, if one got in there, it probably wouldn't do a whole lot of damage. These guys are teeny. But what happens is when one gets in, it kind of creates this highway and all the thrips buddies come to the party and pretty soon you've got a lot of thrips in there feeding and that's what was killing my roses. So as the guy's explaining this to me, I'm like, oh crap, okay, we spent some money on this. I like the way they look, what are we gonna do? And he very quickly assured me that trips are completely treatable. And he says, actually, it's a very simple treatment. The first thing we're gonna do is you need to do an external treatment around the rose bush. And that's to kill the thrips that are trying to get inside and also kind of prevent a barrier to keep them from coming back. And then we also need to do an internal treatment because there's thrips in there that are feeding right now. So there's an insecticide that you're going to mix together and pour around the base of the rose bushes. Those will get into the root system and be taken up into the plant and those will kill the thrips inside. So armed with this information, I went home and I applied the treatment and before long, everything was good. Now, why do I start my presentation today talking about thrips? Thrips. Thrips, because I want you to have a visual. I want you to think about thrips. I want you to think about a coach's business, like a rose bush. And I want you to think about the thrips that can potentially harm a rose bush or a coach's business. Today, I'm gonna to talk with you about the seven thrips that can silently undermine a successful business. It's gonna be a little bit atypical presentation for me from maybe what you've come to expect. I'm gonna ask permission to be a little more forthright and direct with you. And I do that, you guys, because, because I love you guys. And I love our culture. I love who we are. I believe in where we're going. I'm confident that this is the group that's gonna get us there. And there is nothing more that I want or that anyone else I know that comes across the stage wants than for you to be successful, long-term, sustainable, successful in your businesses. And in a lifetime around direct selling, nearly two decades of professional experience around the corporate side, I've seen thousands and thousands of businesses like we're building here. And over that time, I've seen thrips take out a lot of businesses. And some of the thrips are outside of a coach's control, but the vast majority of thrips that undermine a coach's business are within their control. And the power the thrips have is that oftentimes the coaches don't know they're there. So that's what this presentation is about, to help us be better, okay? The seven thrips, okay, that I've identified 
And these are things from, again, a lifetime of looking at this, are this. Distractions that disengage a coach from their business. Rationalizing a decline in acquisition and retention activities. Harboring a defense-oriented mindset. Becoming disengaged from purpose. Becoming unrelatable. Trying to make it too easy and financial irresponsibility. All of the thrips can fit into these, the majority of thrips, I should say, can fit into one of these seven categories. Now, I don't have time to hit on all seven. I prepared, there's a PDF that I'll figure out a way to get to you guys that will have details on all seven. If you care to have them, you can reach out to me or I'll just put it on the round table. But I do want to talk about these three because these are the three that I think right now we need to have this conversation as a leadership group for our entire coach network. And you guys, as Michael pointed out, reach over 200,000 of those. Now, as I get started, whenever I talk about these with coaches, I want to address real quick the yeah buts. Everyone of you probably in the course of this conversation is going to have a yeah but moment. Maybe a few of them. Where you're going to hear me talking, you're going to be like, well, yeah but, yeah but, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah but. Let's talk about the yeah buts. <laughs> when you get there, I'm going to ask you to not get high centered. Don't get stuck on the yeah but in your mind. A lot of leadership is learning how to navigate through uncertainty through the gray. And one of the things that I found most successful to do that is to anchor yourself to principles. Understand the principle and then apply the yeah but to the principle and you'll figure out a solution that works for your reality. So if you come across a yeah but, I'm gonna ask you to write it down and leave it there and focus on the principle that we're trying to talk about. I want you to ponder on that principle, to think about it, try to really internalize it. And then go back to your yeah but later tonight or tomorrow and say, okay, how does this apply? And I'm confident you'll find a solution for that, okay? I just don't want you to get stuck. So let's start. Distractions that disengage a coach from their business. Now, I want to make sure I'm scoping this correctly. When I'm talking distractions, I'm not talking your family or other priorities in your life. Those aren't distractions. Those are priorities. What I'm talking about are distractions within the ecosystem of your business. We all know what distractions are. There is a ton of stuff vying for your attention, you guys. All of your coaches' attention. And sometimes it's hard to know what that is. So let me, let me add some additional detail to that. What I'm qualifying distractions are in this case is any activity that dis defocuses a coach from their goals or business, that disengages a coach's heart, that reduces resources to levels below what their business needs, or a real important one, that diminishes the duplicability of the business. There's also conversations that become distractions. And I use the word prolonged on purpose because we all engage in conversations, but we all also choose how long we want to stay in those conversations. And some of them are productive and some of them are not. A prolonged conversation that is unproductive toward the growth or goal of an achievement qualifies. Or, or, or a prolonged conversation that erodes a coach's belief in themselves or their businesses. Let me give you some examples of things I think we've all seen. Purposeless social media scrolling, following a lot of other coaches, overtraining, overcomplicating, spending too much time on even business related pages like the champions page or team pages, sensationalized topics or discussions on the round table or other closed groups, other entrepreneurial activities promoted through the same channel as a coach's beach body business. Now, the thing about this that I want you to notice that's true for a lot of these distractions is really this thrip thrives on a lack of discipline, where we take good things too far, right? Social media, good thing, taken too far can become a distraction. Overtraining, overcomplicating, typically a good thing, taken a little bit too far. You've seen us kind of try to change some of that with a more, our new coach onboarding. Spending too much time on business related cha things like the champs page, we try to put things in place to mitigate that a little bit on our end. We're gonna be doing some of the similar things on the round table here shortly that you'll hear about, okay? And it come, not here, like in the coming weeks. And I think we can all agree that there've been some sensational topics that have hit the round table um, where the good feedback and the productiveness of the conversation crossed the line and became a little toxic. Now, the good news about all of these is there are remedies. 
And that's where I want to focus myself. Just like with my roses, these remedies, there's external remedies for the environment around and internal mindset remedies that you can put in place to help your coaches with this. Internal remedies, internal treatments, keeping your vision and goals present. I think that's self-explanatory. Focus on controlling the controllable. Guys, few, the, 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 road, the biggest road to distractions is trying to control things you can't control. They're high emotion, high energy, high everything, and they, and they, no matter how much time and attention you give them, you still can't control them. Very, 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 very uh, simple to become distractions. And then building productive routines, okay? Creating predictability in what you're gonna be doing and knowing why you do that. The external treatment, the environmental treatment is creating an environment where self-discipline is a little bit easier. Leave groups, unfollow people, turn off or reduce notifications, I know that's going to be hard, okay? But at what cost do those notifications and those things come? Simplify and prioritize the priorities. Get back to a comfort level of standing on the fundamentals of the business. And finally, create boundaries. Create boundaries so you know when to turn things on, turn things off, and keep your life um, um, centered in the ways you want, okay? Let's go to the next one. Rationalizing a decline in acquisition and retention activities. Now, I don't need to spend a lot of time describing this one. I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but I do want to clarify a couple points here or make sure that we're aligned. And we've talked a little bit about this from the stage. Acquisition and retention is our core business model. The acquisition and retention of customers, helping them get started, helping them build lifestyle habits facilitated by the use of our products, retaining them, that's our core business. We duplicate our business when we teach another coach how to do that. That model is how volume strong, volume rich, stable organizations are created. <clears throat> now, I know, we all know, kind of know what this, this can look like. And we know what happens when we get there. We tend to fill, when we see coaches do this, they tend to fill that time doing other things. So let me see if I can give you some, some ideas of what it might look like to help you identify this through. Habits of procrastination. Being busy versus being productive. Not wanting to be accountable to an activity tracker. Feeling like, well, this is beneath me. I don't need to do this anymore. Okay. Not adapting activity habits as life's changes come along. Your lives aren't in stasis, they move, and as they shift, are we shifting as well our activity habits? Management mode, this idea of doing what I say versus doing what I do. Allowing things to become persistent roadblocks to activities. That's a very broad topic, but I want you to think about what that bullet point could mean. Persistent reasons why I can't, why I can't do those activities. And tripping over inconvenience. I didn't meet a goal. I didn't do what I wanted. This isn't exactly kind of how I like it. My coach didn't give me this information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Tripping over inconvenience. Now, there's also remedies to this. Let's talk about the remedies. The internal, the mindset remedies can be things like, first of all, you got to be honest with yourself. This trip is tricky because people who are in that stage of rationalizing a decline, and I want to make sure I'm clear on this. I'm not talking about new coaches or inexperienced coaches trying to get into that activity. And I'm not talking about coaches who are already in the activity trying to say you need to do more. I'm talking about people who coaches who are in that activity and then have just kind of replaced that time and energy doing other business related things for whatever reason. Okay. And typically when that happens, there's a lot of reasoning why I can't do this. And it's very hard to argue against that reasoning because people are really good at defending that reasoning. So it starts with having an honest conversation with yourself, believing that you can make a difference, that the work of actually, actually helping and acquiring customers and that core business model is actually purposeful. Remembering the truth of the flywheel. What I mean by this is that typically coaches, again, that I'm talking about in this situation have spent a lot of time and energy and they've got their flywheel spinning with acquisition and retention. And when they start to take their foot off, it doesn't stop right away. It slowly starts to wind down. And so it gives the, the erroneous impression that they can just walk away from it and it will just keep going. But that's not how a flywheel works, okay? And then focusing on the customer's success, okay? Um, remembering why you do what you do. External treatments, environmental. Communicating a 50-50 rule. 
to your team, setting the expectation that at least, you know, at, at most 50, 50, 50% 50 of my time on my personal business acquisition and retention activities, 50% of my team business. For a lot of the coaches, it's more going to be like 70, 30 or 60, 40, but set that expect that expectation, being accountable to an activity tracker, doing these acquisition and retention activities first. Okay. Setting that as your, your routine and doing things like not immediately feeling like you have to answer every message that a coach sends you. Let it sit for a minute. You'll be surprised how often they'll just go find it on their own, the answer on their own. Okay. The last one I want to talk about harboring a defense oriented mindset. I use the word harboring on purpose. Our mindset is often a reflection of our habits and our inputs. And both of those things are rooted in our choices. In other words, they're things we can control. And so when we say harbor, we get to choose what we harbor in our mind, right? And this one is, this one can, it's the most subtle of all the thrips. It can sneak up on people. And, and, and I get it, right? When your business, when a coach's business is kind of this fun side hustle and it's all extra, hey, it's really easy, right? To kind of think a certain way. But then when more things become dependent upon it, the risk feels like it's higher. And without knowing it, instead of playing to win, I'm playing not to lose. And to the coach, everything feels like it's the same. The acti activities feel the same. The actions feel the same. They feel like nothing's changed, but they wonder why things aren't working as well anymore. And a lot of times what they don't realize is something has changed. And it was their mindset. They're playing defense, not offense, which is what got them in the game in the first place. This threat perpetuates the erroneous belief that the best way to protect a growing business, the best way to grow it and sustain it is to hunker down, is to grab onto all the people that you've got and just keep them there and just pretend like it's just, it's just us. And you become blind to opportunity. A coach cannot sustain growth or build momentum while harboring a defense oriented mindset. It never works. So what can it look like? Struggling to set goals that motivate. These are things that you can help identify in your, with your coaches if they're playing defense instead of offense. Their decisions are reactive instead of proactive. They have a tendency to see most things as threats. And that good old longing for the good old days. You remember back then when the algorithm was different? You remember back when there was nobody on Facebook doing longing for the good old days, okay? Here's some remedies. Internal treatment. Be conscious of and own your choices. You can't effectuate change in your life if you don't believe that your choices can actually bring about change. So you've got to own those choices. Do personal development that feeds your why. Challenge yourself with big, hairy, audacious goals. Few things gets a person out of a defensive mindset more than a challenge that requires them to play offense. Be solution oriented. Problems are going to be inevitable. Things, disagreements, inevitable. But how we approach those things with solution orientedness is how we can keep ourselves on offense. External treatments, environmental treatments. You got to own your inputs. Be responsible for the things that you surround yourself with and let get in your mind. Because a lot of times those things, again, impact your mindset. Habits and inputs really drive your mindset. Have a gratitude accountability partner. Sounds really weird. My son, Joshua, my 14 year old son is my gratitude accountability partner. I tend to slip into defense when I'm not careful. So every day when he comes home from school, I ask my son, Josh, what's three good things that happened today? And he tells me, and he says, dad, what's three good things that happened today? And he tells me it's weird, but it's what we do and it works. Okay. And then surround yourself with people and things that lift you up. Okay. Both in inputs, and then things that align themselves to what you want. Now, this is the last slide I've got. And, and honestly, it was the one I was most nervous to share because I didn't know what I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, I know what I want to convey. I know that I want to share. But I don't know how to say it. And I just trusted myself in the moment that I'd do it. So here it goes. When I look out, I just see a garden of rose bushes, you guys. You represent 250,000 coaches. What a garden that is, right? We have so much opportunity today and coming to us. And we've gotta be the group 
that handles that opportunity, that takes advantage of that opportunity. We've got to help each other. We've got to help each other keep these thrips out. We've got to care enough to not just care about our own little world, but enough to help each other be here for the long run. And I think we can do that. I believe in us. I believe in us. I know where we're going and I know what it's going to be like. And I'm excited. I want all of us and all the way to the back of that room to be filled with more people with these blooming businesses that do this. But we've got to watch out for thrips. We've got to watch out for those thrips, you guys. All right. Thank you guys very much. All right. Whew. Okay. So I want to open it up. I want to open it up to all of you guys. Is there someone that wants to share a, you know, when he was going over the thrips, because I, I don't know about you guys, but I got like a page full of notes here, things that resonated with me. Um, and by the way, if you're a new coach on this call, you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, you just signed up, you're just getting started and you haven't really wet your feet into the coaching business. Um, this was a great call to hear because you can understand, you know, sometimes there, there can be distractions along the way there. Sometimes there can be things that you think are business related actions that are actually not as productive. You can understand that when you're in conversations that are not feeding your growth in this or not feeding your mindset or feeding what your, your mission is in your, uh, your, your coaching business. Um, so I want to hear from you guys. I understand that you may be standing back and you're learning here. It's a learning opportunity to hear from coaches that have a little bit more tenure, the things that they're going through that can now help you remain in offense mode, can help you, you know, target what actions, actionable steps in your business, like, you know, the business activity tracker, like tracking your business that are, that are what's going to push you forward in a big way versus the stuff that's not, you know, the thrips in the business that can actually hold you back from a thriving business. So, um, new coaches, sit back and just listen because it's, you know, there's so much power in hearing other people that you can get ahead of the game. But for the coaches that have a little bit more tenure, is there any of the thrips that maybe stood out to you that you just really made you say, Hmm, you have any volunteers? I'm usually one in class like me. Oh, don't make me pick somebody. Don't make me pick somebody. I mean, I'll share what was my, um, it was my biggest takeaway at the retreat and it's, it's, you know, still my biggest takeaway here and it's about playing offense. Um, I feel that a lot of times in my business, I'm on the defense mode. I'm not, something he said was that you need to play to win, not play, not to lose. And I kind of just, have repeated that over and over again because you, you, you listen to that and you think you're in the game when you're really going ball to the wall in a game you're playing to win you're not just sitting there to get by and you know maybe score a few points no you want to win and I think we all deserve to win in this business we all deserve to go out there and give it our all and if we don't have any points on the board at the end of the day fine, but at least you went in all in. And a lot of times I feel that if we're standing in defense mode, we're not seeking those opportunities to win. We're not seeking that chance to really level up and get outside of our comfort zone and get uncomfortable because that's when changes happen, when we get uncomfortable. And we tend to avoid that as humans. Like nobody wants to be uncomfortable, but when you're uncomfortable, that's when changes happen, whether it be in your physical fitness or in this business I think the same rule applies ah, absolutely and when you you know you and I I remember being in the retreat and you looked over me and like that's it that's it for me um, because you came into the, the business when you finally set your your mind on building um, you were like like he said, you know, when you're first starting, you're playing to win because it's all fun and it's, and it's exciting and it's new, but it can, you can very easily fall into like this management mode. You can really, really easily fall into this, this trap of now all of a sudden getting on the defense and not shooting for bigger and bigger or not shooting for more and more and just being excited about what you're doing. Um, and I think that a really big, big part that he said in his, in his, um, presentation about how to remedy it is to consistently do personal development that's going to feed your why. I think that's a really big deal that we, you know, 
it, it's very easy to overlook that part. It's very easy to say, okay, now I understand this. I'm just going to get to work and I'm going to stop working on my personal development. But that ongoing use of personal development as you're simultaneously tackling the things that make you uncomfortable is what's going to grow you into the person you need to be to then take it to the next level and the next level and the next level of that. I, eight years in, I'm still tackling next levels, still doing personal development, still going back to the drawing board for a lot of things. So, you know, if you're a coach in this, on this call, just know that it's important. It's important um, to focus, to, first of all, know your why, number one. Number two, to know what your goals are. Have them drawn out so you know what you're aiming for. Have fun with it, get on the offense, and know that in the beginning, you're supposed to be uncomfortable. And you're gonna, you gotta get comfortable with being uncomfortable because like Amy just said, that is where the change is starting to happen. And that's exactly what you came here for, right? Nobody signed up to stay the same. Everybody signed to elevate and take their life to, to another level with this business. So I, Amy, I love that. And that's our new hashtag, hashtag play to win. Um, but that was a really powerful line as Protect well. Protect your bush. Oh, that's coming next. Don't worry, bro. Don't worry, bro. Anybody else? Michi, I saw you un unmute yourself. Yeah, I just want to add um, to what Amy said. I don't think any of us are immune to be getting uncomfortable. I think it takes practice and reminders. And that falls back to personal development. Why, you know, that is so important. Because it's so easy to forget. Again, it's not innate in us to get uncomfortable. We are very quick to want to protect ourselves and feel safe and comfortable. So it's in that personal development and in holding each other accountable and calling each other out on our shit that, you know, we get to just take that jump and take that, you know, leap of faith, even though it's very scary. So... Yeah, I'm complete. <laughs> I love that. Yes, it's true. That's another big thing is calling each other out. He said that, you know, being honest, even having that honest conversation with yourself. You know, um, I think a lot of times, you know, we, we're, we're working our business and we're thinking to ourselves, well, I'm doing everything and I'm doing everything to, you know, and I, you know, I, I'm crossing off all, checking off all the boxes, but, you know, nothing's happening, so to speak. And it's just having that honest conversation of saying, well, really, are you doing everything? Like really, because if you were doing everything, then you would be succeeding in some place because that means you there's something you haven't tried. There's something you haven't tapped into. Um, there's some, there's something else out there. There are other things to exhaust. And so I loved when he talked about that. And, um, and I agree, you know, a lot of this is feeding your mind as you're doing it so that you, you constantly have the energy to get out there and learn new things and do new things and talk to new people and, and be confronted with new challenges. Bottom line, new challenges. You're getting challenged right now in the fitness, right? A lot of us just tapped into a fitness program that's challenging us on that, in that arena. Same thing, you know, the coaching business, it parallels greatly to what we do, you know, in our, in our workouts. We're getting out there and every day you get better because you're putting in the work, right? And you're putting in your that sweat equity, same thing for your business. Um, I think another big thing when he was talking about decline and acquisition because you know what happens a lot of times new coaches come in and they're fired up in the beginning. They, you know, usually with their warm market, they, they take off, become success starters. And then all of a sudden they start to like plateau. And I think um, when he was talking about that, a lot of the things that he shared were really important. Um, number one, the flywheel. Like when we're working on things and we expect to just keep going because we started something and we didn't continue to build off of it is very important. Um, another thing is going into management mode, right? Where we start saying to ourselves, well, it's not important to track because I already kind of know what I'm doing. I'm, you know, I remember when I started my business, I would have, you know, all these lists of everybody I was talking to. And I was very organized. And then somewhere along the way in my business, I would lose track of that. And I just kind of be working off the top of my head and I would always, things would always fall through the crack and I had to revert myself and come back, you know, you got to get back to tracking, got to get back to, to making sure that you're not just in management mode and you're not just working off the fly, the flywheel. And so I think that that was really important as well. And then having like life and, you know, adapting to life changes. Cause how many of us don't have life changing flipping up on us? Right? Like all the time, all the time. I wake up and I don't even know what move my daughter's going to be in. And that's going to you know, determine the rest of my day. And so I think that's, that was a really big one to me too, hearing him say, um, you know, being able to adapt to what your life, what's happening in life, that you still put this business on a pedestal, you still make it one of your priorities and your non-negotiable goals um, towards the greater purpose of what you're doing with this. Is there anyone else that wants to share something? I'll share. Go. 
Um, so it's kind of the same thing that stuck with me at leadership. And then it really hit me again, like even harder now that I've kind of like had time to reflect, but it's where he talked about at the end of the day, like discipline, 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 discipline. If your business is not moving forward, if you're not hitting success club, if your people aren't messing you back, like all of these things. And I think it's super easy to start blaming outside things like, oh, I don't have a good upline or, oh, if I would have signed up with this person, then this would have happened. And I think that it's super easy to blame those external things. But what that for me in that moment, it really made me sit there and say, no, it's me. Like, have I really woken up every single day and put at least an hour into this business and not just like, following other coaches and scrolling through social media? Like, have I been doing income producing activities? Have I been inviting people to join me? Like what we have is amazing. What we have is incredible. So why am I not shouting it from the rooftops? I think like as brand new coaches, it's super easy to do because we kind of have like this naiveness, I think, because we're so innocent in the business and that we're just super excited. Like, oh my gosh, I just lost all this weight and I'm super excited and I feel so good. And then as we start learning more about the business, sometimes we kind of paralyze ourselves and we pull back. And then that flywheel thing happens. So for me, I think it was just the discipline and understanding that at the end of the day, the way your business is moving is up to you. Like you have total and complete control. Life happens regardless. Trauma happens regardless. It is up to you how you decide if you're going to use this business as an excuse and a burden, or if you're going to use it as your platform to catapult you forward. And it can be that. We've seen oh, so many of us be able to do that. And so it's truly a decision that you have to make and the discipline to say, okay, I can sit here and I can play, I play this stupid color game on my phone. Like I could sit here and like, play this stupid color game that just uses zero percent of my brain cells or i could do something that's going to help my family so that i can retire my stethoscope in two years like i want to like is playing that game going to help me reach my vision no but sending invites and asking people to come do this thing with me is so being disciplined enough to put the phone down well not really put the phone down put the color game down and start inviting like discipline that's what it comes down to and it's hard because it means that you have to turn inward and kind of gut check yourself and nobody really likes to do that like who likes to be like tab get your shit together like nobody wants to do that but at the end of the day if you can't do that to yourself how can you lead a team like really if you can't even get up and send five invites do you think you are like ready to have an organization of 14,000 coaches? Like, let's be real. Can you handle a million dollar business if you can't even send five invites? Like, let's be honest, you know? So I don't know. That was it's funny of- you say that. It's funny you say that because, you know, I'm kind of like that. I, I talk to myself like that too. Like I'm a very tough love. I talk to myself and, and in my home gym, I have written down my next big goal. Like, you know how I talked about the big, big ass, hairy, audacious goals that Kim just talked about. I have one. And here's what I did. I put it on every mirror in my house that I look in, especially in my gym, like really big, right above where I work out. And as I'm working out, when I want to stop, especially doing freaking six weeks of the work, when I'm is like killing you, I look up and I'm like, a superstar diamond does not stop. A superstar diamond does not give up. A superstar diamond has epic results. A superstar diamond gives it her all. And I swear to you guys, it's because I'm telling myself over and over, like, you want superstar diamond? You need to grow into that person. You want superstar diamond? When I go to the bathroom in the morning, I wake up and it's right above me while I'm brushing my teeth. You want superstar diamond? You better make today productive. These are the things that I do to myself. It's the way I talk to myself for my next goal. So you see how important that is? And it's like, it's that tough love and that honest conversation that you got to have with yourself because at the end of the day, your coach is not going to set the goals for you. They, cause it's not about what they want for you. Cause if it were up to me, I'd be like, everybody, you know, I'm super I'm in organizations. It's about what you want out of this. And it's gotta, it's gotta align with your why, why you're doing this in the first place. We haven't figured that part out. I really urge you to sit down and think about that. Like, why are you here? What do you love about this? What is it that makes you tick? What it is that you want out of this? What do you want to provide to others, to share with others? Because it's that passion that's going to ooze out of you. And that's just going to be contagious to the next person. 
So I, I agree with you, 1000% discipline. That is absolutely necessary. Um, and, and most of all is having those honest conversations. I, I love it. Amen. All right, with that being said, I have a confession. Go for it. You guys, a year into my business, I became a thrift. Like it's, it's just, I became a thrift. I, I started to uh, diminish the, the, do I really need a success club? Like who cares about success club? Like really, does it really mean anything? Or, you know, I did the, yeah, but Monica would say, you know, are you doing everything you can? Yeah, but you don't understand. Like I work and yeah, but you don't understand. Like my life, you don't understand. Yeah, but you know, and I started to play those mind games to myself. So when he was giving this training, I was just like, you know, I think at one point we like start doing what thrips do to ourselves. We self-sabotage. It's just, it's just, in us. when it gets hard, it's so much easier to just retreat and like put up the defense, the wall and be like, screw it. It's not even that important anyways. Like whatever, like that's easier than to go. It's you, you're the freaking problem. Like really Veronica. And when I tell everybody a part of my story, when I hit that fork in the road, because I was exhausted with fighting with myself, okay? It's an exhausting place to be, okay? When you feel like you wake up every day and you set the goal to have like this very productive day, and then at the end of the day, you do nothing and you're just like, you're, you, you, you're, you are, you are, how, what's the word? Like you feel bad at the end of the day, but to yourself, like for yourself, like, God, Veronica, how- Unaccomplished. Huh? unaccomplished unaccomplished yeah or, or i'm mad at myself or and nobody wants to be mad at themselves nobody wants to like put that mirror up and say like you know it's you right and so guys i what i realized in this business and and that was one thing that again had it not been for monica to not slow down her success just because i was being a thrip you know monica made me realize something it's possible for all of us what Christina Delgado has, what Melanie Mitchell has, they have the exact same platform as we do. They don't have a magical Instagram that gets followers. They don't have a magical, you know, a people that they reach out to and they automatically sign up. No, we sat up there at leadership. And one of the most comforting things to me was hearing how Melanie Mitchell, Ashley Molstad, top 10 coaches struggle too. Like they struggle, but the difference is, is that they don't stop. They don't let that thrip mindset take over, paralyze them. Like guys, we unconsciously, because I didn't realize I was a thrip then. I didn't, I didn't realize. I wholeheartedly in my mind thought that I had legit reasons to sit back and not work the business, but yet have this expectation that the business should be handed to me or should be easy to me. No, like it, I, that gut check that Tabitha said, it is so necessary. It is so necessary because once you're able to talk to yourself that way and have that realization and have that tough love with yourself, like the, on top of that, anybody else that does it to you or that gives you that, that crap, you're able to be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I've done it to myself. I, I don't need to hear yours. Like you're, you're going to be able to deal with it easier. If, am, I, am I making sense in what I'm trying to say, guys? Like, have that tough love, have that conversation, and catch yourself. If you're being a thrip, because I was a damn thrip, Monica. Like, now that I think back and look at our conversations, holy crap. Like, I would, it, that's not fair to Monica. That's not fair to the team. And it's definitely not fair to me. What I was doing to myself, I was self sabotaging. Catch yourself. If you're being a thrip and you find your mind, playing those tricks on you and telling you all those things that, that Kim said, catch yourself, have that hard realization. Because again, this platform, this success, everything that we have here, it's attainable to all of you. It's it, it, all of this, all this success is attainable to all of you. It's up to you to do it. It's not up to Monica. It's not up to me. It's not up to your upline. It's up to nobody. Nobody's going to do it for you. We can sit there and, and say, let's go. But at the end of the day, it's got to come from you. So I will sit here and tell you guys, now that I have somewhat have, I've had success in this business. Don't get me wrong. I'm not stopping. And I've got so much more growth to go, 
But I will tell you, Success Club is important. Personal development is important. These sneak peeks, these launches, these group things that we do together, they are important. And like Kim says, it's because we care. We, we want this success for you. We want this for you. So we want to make it as easy as possible. But you also have to self-reflect and catch yourself. Protect your bush. That can mean something really, really like, like so, yeah. So, gross, yeah. But you get. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what me and Amy were laughing. Bronca, that was amazing. And, you know, thank you for. That, that takes a lot to say that out loud. That takes a lot to say that out loud and recognize that. I think all of us at some point um, do that Do that in this business. Because and sometimes we don't realize it. We don't realize it because it's coming out of frustration. It's coming out of emotion. It's coming out of, um, you know, struggle, struggle. And who, everyone struggles. And so, but I think the most important part is, like you say, the self-reflection, to be able to stand back. And that's, that's working on the offense, guys. Like, that's it. That's what it takes is just be able to call yourself on things, stop yourself, redirect, and get back in the game. Because like she said, Melanie Metro, Christina Delgado, you know, Ashley Molstad, same 24 hours. They have the same platform. They have the same everything. Um, the only thing that separates them from us is time and how hard they push and the mindset they keep themselves in. I bet you they hashtag protect their bush. They protect their bush. This was a funny hashtag that uh, Amy and I were, were cracking up because it just came out of my mouth at, at the retreat when I was like, we got to protect our bush. And it just sounds hilarious. And that's what I want to pass on tonight. That's what, if you take nothing from anything we shared tonight, I want you to remember this always, is to protect your bush. Every single time you start to let those, any negative threat come into your, your, and attack your mindset. And you have anything that is, that is threatening your mind power. You have to hashtag protect your bush. Because we are all roses in this garden. We are. Whether you're starting to bloom, whether you're full bloom and you're just kind of trying to keep that color, whether you're just a seed just planted, you are a rose in this garden. And it is up to you to protect your bush. Amen yeah? to that. And guys, remember, these thrips can come in different forms. So they can come in where we're our own thrift, right? Like, I think that's like the, the big one for me. Like for me, it was, I was my own thrift, but they can come as family members, friends, or even events or, or, or groups or things that are just not healthy. Be able to detach yourself emotionally, stand back and say, like I, I, I told this to the girls, the one question that keeps me going and that one question that helps me make rational decisions, make, helps me like snap out of my crap is, at this very moment, I'll just emo remove myself emotionally and say, is this, is this serving me? So when I'm like sitting and scrolling through Facebook, I'll stop myself and say, is this serving me? No. Okay. Go to do something that's going to serve me. Or if I'm in a conversation and it's just like, not really a really good one. I'm going to think to myself, is this serving me? You know what? No. And I'll do, you know what? I, I really got to go or, or, or go to a vet. It's just thrips happen everywhere. And it's just, the way it is, they come in different forms. So like Monica said, protect your bush, but be able to acknowledge and know what thrips look like because there's no one thrift or multiple. Yeah, and guys, and this, you know, now that we're talking about this, like this applies to everything in life. Everything in life. Like you have to protect your mind part. You got to decide what it is you let in. You got to decide. Um, I know a lot of you guys have picked up Les Brown, uh, Les Brown's, um, that, what's it, the... Oh my God, what's it called? Reach for the stars. Shoot Mark. for the moon. Yeah, shoot for the moon. That the series on uh, that podcast series of Les Brown, amazing. Man, I, I think I'm actually gonna revisit it. But one of my favorites is when he talks about protecting your mind power. This comes in the form of watching the news. That's not gonna serve you. It comes in the form of the people that you're surrounding yourself with. It comes in the form of even teaching your children this, right? If they're being, if they're involved in gossip or in things that are not gonna serve them, like, this is something that's important in all of life in all of life, especially so in this business, especially so when you're trying to level up your life and do something new, something exciting, and something that can really change the trajectory of your entire life. If you have the audacity to want something big, you gotta, you gotta have the audacity to protect it, to protect it and to get out there and, and it's your baby. It's your baby and your mind power is your baby. So we will end tonight's call with just that. Hashtag Protect your bush. Protect your bush because we are all roses in this garden. No matter what level we are at, we are all roses and it's time to bloom.
in unison. Yes, Diesel Car? Can I get a heck yeah? All right, let me get off screen share so we can take our group photos. Actually, can someone do it? If you guys see my screen not right now, look, I want to take a picture of my screen. My laptop is crapping out. I'll post this so you guys can crack up because you guys are all orange and purple and green. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll <laughs> so you I'll don't do know what, yeah, so you don't know what screen you're on. We got three screens. So Veronica will say, well, let me stop the recording. Veronica 